So I want to take a little bit of time to explain this visual inference thing. Um, it's kind of weird. So it may not seem immediately apparent as to why we would ever want to do this. Um, and I can understand that because it is kind of weird, but it's very much related to something we're going to get into a little bit later on, uh, just a slightly different flavor of it. So instead of uh, producing some kind of big uh, distribution of possible outcomes, we're going to do it visually, which is kind of a neat thing to do. But let me kind of break it down a little bit for you real quick. Uh, again, just to get a feel for what's going on here. Let's say we have two variables. We have an X and we have a Y, right? Nothing too out of control there. And if we just a couple points here. Here's an X, here's a Y, and let's say we have one, three, two, five, three, seven, four, eight, five, ten. And if we plot something like that, right, we should or we will get something like a straight line. Nothing out of control there, nothing wild, right? It's just the data is the data. The relationship is a relationship, no matter what it looks like, no matter what form it takes, that is what we have. But let's take one of these variables. Let's take this Y variable, okay? So we'll take this Y variable, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna shuffle the values in there. We're gonna keep this X the same. X will remain as it is, right? So we're gonna take this Y, and we had everything from uh, three to 10 there. I may not remember all the values exactly, but bear with me. The point will remain, we have 10, we have five, and we have seven, and we have eight, and we have, uh, let's say three. Will it still produce this visualization? No, of course it won't. Well, why won't it produce that visualization? The original one, the first one. Well, because the data has changed. So we're taking all of the values that were there originally and we're just shuffling them around. We're taking everything that was there and putting it in a bag and then throwing it back in. So it may not appear, or it may not, it won't appear in the same order that it was there before. So why would we do this? Well, here's why we're gonna do this. Because if, if the original data produced a relationship that looks like this, and then we randomize it, and now we have a relationship that looks like this, or we have a relationship that looks like this, or we have a relationship that looks like that, right? Things have changed. So this is fine if we're putting a line through here, but where this becomes even more helpful is when we get into these situations where we just have a scatter plot. Let's take a look at what we would maybe expect to see with a lot of data. If we have a relationship that looks kind of like this, it's maybe somewhat clear. I think you can probably see that. It's pretty clear what that looks like, right? It looks like if you could draw a really nice linear line through that. There's nothing there that's going to trick us at all with what's, uh, with what's happening. But let's, again, shuffle one of those variables. So again, the values, all the values are there. They're just in random order. Whatever that random order shakes out, however it is, is what it is going to be. Right. So if we take this, now we would expect, or we could see something like that, right? That relationship that was originally there isn't there. And if we keep plotting these and keep randomizing that same variable, another random draw and plot it, another random draw and plot it, another random draw and plot it, we're going to keep seeing things that hopefully just look like a random assortment of points. Because if we're taking values and we randomize them, we really wouldn't ever expect to see this come back out of it. Now, if we did it several thousand times, we would get something that looks a little bit like this, right? We would expect to maybe recover something that looks like that eventually. But again, the vast majority of them are going to look more like these, just a random assortment of points. If we would see something that was very clear that it continued to exhibit some kind of relationship, and no matter how we randomize that, uh, that could indicate that we've got something kind of weird going on in our data, right? That weird stuff could very much be related to uh, just every, every assortment is going to produce some kind of relationship. But what is a little bit more likely of a scenario would be something like this. 
And this is really where the real power of this comes from. Because as people, we have a very bad tendency to look for patterns. It's not necessarily a bad tendency. It's what we're built to do. We're built to pick up on patterns, no matter where they are, no matter where we're seeing them, no matter what we're looking at, we're just kind of primed to, to find something that's there. It's been good for our survival, but for interpreting data, it may not be the best thing. So let's uh, imagine a scenario that's like this you produce a visualization and you get something that kind of looks like this and you look at that and you say oh wow i see that relationship that's amazing it's got a clear linear relationship well and if we take that and we randomize one of the variables right just a random shuffle of the very uh, of the of the values within that variable and we again see something like this and we do it again and we see something like this and we see something like this so forth and so on what's that really say about that the strength of that relationship that we saw we that we thought we saw in the first place if we have this to where every random draw is going to produce something that we can't tell random from reality then it makes you kind of wonder how strong that relationship actually was when we produce this initial one. If you cannot tell real data from simulated data, then maybe that strength of relationship in the real one uh, probably isn't really that strong. So this is kind of a safeguard for visualization so that you don't look at a visualization and start to interpret a pattern that really isn't there. Because if you cannot pick out a real visualization from a whole body of simulated random visualizations, then there's probably nothing interesting there. So again, this is probably one of those things that you'll have some questions about because it's kind of a weird concept the first time you see it. And why would we ever want to do this? What's the point? What's the purpose? Again, it's kind of just a, a way to tell us how strong and how potentially uh, true our visual uh, inference would have been out of this. All right, how strong is that relationship? Again, kind of a weird concept, uh, kind of tricky. It takes a little bit of time for it to sink in. Uh, so again, this is one of those things that I would anticipate you having some questions about. And when those questions come up, that's awesome. And until next time, we'll just keep plugging along.